controversy of sorts or a misunderstanding of uh, what was going on in uh, West Lincoln. And Mayor uh, Dave Bilsma joining us on the uh, program this morning. Mr. Mayor, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Um, all things considered, you know, COVID. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, we're all kind of underneath this pandemic umbrella of uh, a, a completely different world for us uh, at all times, it seems. You've been handling that all right, though? You know what? It, uh, there was no playbook uh, that they handed me at the beginning of this, so we're all in this together trying to sort it out. Uh, you know, it's um, it's it's been a challenge, uh, certainly, but uh, capable staff and and, uh, you know, uh, patient public, uh, for the most part, I think we've survived quite well. Ready for phase two, though, are you? Yeah, you know, uh, I think everyone is. Um, so, you know, it's like, again, you know, we're just mayors uh, kind of receiving information from experts, you know, and I, maybe both of those are in quotes, air quotes, but uh, you try to sort out you know, facts from fiction, fiction, and and you try to stay off of Facebook, you know, and and, and try to navigate in the world in the world of reality, and 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 you hear people and you hear stories, and you try to you try to identify uh, to a certain extent, um, and you make uh, you make the changes that are that are allowed, and and you, where you, you you know, as a municipality, you chart your own course a little bit, you you, you see the. The provincial regulations and and uh, and uh, plan to recover, and you apply it to your own municipality where you where you can. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's all kind of a patchwork at this point in time. We just keep trying to uh, figure out what the rules are going to look like when we get there. Uh, we wanted to talk to you this morning because there is some um, well qu- controversy of sorts in West Lincoln over why the why the pride flag is not uh, not flying at City Hall. Uh, what happened here? So. You know, I, I, I got to take ownership for for uh, probably a good chunk of that. Um, uh, some communications did come across my desk. Um, you know, it kind of in the middle, right, right in the beginning of the COVID thing, COVID crisis. When our, uh, you know, and and as a, as a mayor, I mean, any mayor will attest that our inboxes are full of of all kinds of asks and requests and and information and downloads from various organizations and. And, and this one kind of came through my uh, regional uh, portal, um, and which is why uh, Councillor Albert Woodavine also received it. And, and um, I, I found that out later. But, uh, um, yeah, just um, an oversight, in, I guess, in, in all the COVID activity. And I wasn't aware. So I, I receive usually copied to me. Correspondence also goes to clerks and to CAOs and such. And I... And, um, it, it didn't go to the clerk, so it didn't get put on as a correspondence and didn't get addressed uh, in time. But uh, we've, we've rectified that now. Um, I'm uh, pleased to say that uh, we have a special council meeting uh, scheduled for next uh, Tuesday morning. So uh, there'll be a fulsome discussion, so West Lincoln discussion, and, and uh, pending that, we're, we're, we're charting a course also, you know, I mean, discussions about policies in general. Uh, we have... Uh, kind of a flag raising uh, precedent, uh, but we have no policies about uh, what goes up, what goes down. And so there's kind of a, a fulsome discussion about uh, what do we do um, as, a, as a municipality. Well, years ago, I don't know how many, we as a municipality determined that we weren't going to make any proclamations. So that was on the books. And, uh, you know, I guess uh, Tuesday um, in the morning at 11 o'clock, we'll be having our... Uh, uh, a discussion on the matter. You, you get we've invited the uh, we've invited the chair of uh, Pride Niagara to uh, to make his presentation to uh, to the council at that time, and uh, so it's worked for everybody to attend. You, you get how optically this doesn't look good, though, right? Oh, sure, I know, I know. Because because I, I think for a lot of people, they're just thinking, why why isn't there just a, a you know a date circled on the, on the calendar for a lot of these, and it just says here's Pride Week, we're going to be put on the flag. It just seems in, in the world of the politics that we have to play nowadays, uh, being aware of that and being proactive on that instead of waiting for somebody to put a formal email in through the clerk, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, just feels like you're you're ahead of the game, sort of thing. Yeah, I know. Except that you know, democracy still is important, and a good fulsome discussion at our uh, municipal. Uh, Council Chambers is, you know, it just makes it uh, open, transparent for everyone. Uh, you know, we all have, uh, you know, uh, views on the matter and, and uh, you know, a, a discussion. And then, like I said, it's a broader discussion about, uh, 
Oh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, just uh, there's there's a lot of flags that could be flown, right? And um, we, uh, I guess, you know, fundamentally, uh, we're in a like a culture, and I and I mean like a larger North American context where identity politics is uh, kind of it's been running kind of rampant for, for decades. I don't, I don't know when you would say that identity politics kind of emerged, but it hasn't really been solving things. And if you look at the kind of the race relations and black lives matter and kind of that, that response that all lives matter, that kind of, for, for many people, kind of strikes at the core of, I, uh, uh, of identity politics. You know, um, uh, nobody's arguing that all lives matter. And, and the challenge, and nobody's arguing that black lives, as a subset of all lives, uh, don't matter. Everybody's, you know, in agreement. And and so, you know, you want to you want to develop a policy that recognizes um, not just uh, you know uh, sexual orientation, but uh, religions, um, you know, uh, races, uh, any any way that our constitution has parsed people up. Um, you know, the protected rights of, of assembly and, and uh, freedom of religion and uh, and uh, sexual orientation protected under the charter and uh, age and all those those areas, those categories that you can't discriminate against. You know, I mean, uh, a discussion about age friendly uh, flag. We rose we raised an age friendly flag and kind of in retrospect, people are like, well, isn't that just for seniors? It's like, well. If you attended the conference, you would know that age friendly was it's trying to look at a wholesome and fulsome um, interchange between all ages. We were trying to connect uh, youth with seniors and and uh, try to plug in you know that busy uh, young parent stage to uh, you know uh, more senior uh, family stages. That's wholesome, right? That's that's. That's identifying everybody, right? And and we just want to make sure that we have a policy that doesn't single out any one category of people as a subset uh, over the other ones. Because I think that we could divide Canada all different ways, um, French versus English or Indigenous versus the rest. And, and what we end up having is this kind of controversy, this, this um, we, you know, it's, it's very combative, um, and it, it seems that anybody who's asking for, you know, the, the whole, the unity, um, there was, I've, I've received a lot of um, um, chatter and emails just saying, what's, what's wrong with just the one flag? And it's always the perennial question. What's wrong with just a Canadian flag flying over the municipal office? Uh, does, does identity politics even belong on a municipal flagpole? And uh, no, I guess that's part of the discussion ongoing, you know, to develop a policy. Um, you know, so we're we're gonna go through the democratic process and and uh, see where uh, see where we land. So do you, do you are, are you landing in the position where you don't want to have any other flag other than the the city flag and the Canadian flag flying? Then is that what that's you're doing? My, that's my personal position, but I mean, I, I mean, I just well because it's 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 Canada, it's Canadian flag. It's very it, it includes everybody. But the, the, uh, the, 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 the message that's being sent, to, and I, I, you know, sometimes maybe we fly a lot of flags, but the message that is sent, and I'm you know, specific with the, the, the pride flag, and I think you, you tried to tie it to the uh, Black Lives Matter movement, you, you understand what that message is being sent, right, and, and why that message is more important than uh, putting up a flag that says all lives matter or something like that, right? Well, and, and certainly I, I, under, I understand the, the, the discussion about, you know, pride, and I discussed. You know, like, like I'll be the first. This is Canada. Um, they are in, insured all the rights under our constitution, and uh, th- that's not that's not the discussion. I guess sooner or later, a discussion needs to form around: Is this working? Is is the our, our you know the, the Black Lives Matter? Uh, um, what that's probably about? Um, I'm going to say about eight, seven, or eight years old. With that that kind of hashtag. Um, you know, it, are things getting better? And and you look at what's happened. Um, it, it has polarized people because there's there's a very well-meaning group of people who say, "Look, aren't we all 
you know, it, it's tied. I mean, okay, so we're tying it to the race, which is tied to um, tied to something else. One of our most fundamental rights is is uh, freedom of religion. You know, I'm a I'm a Christian. I've you know never made any uh, secret of that. Uh, I've I've campaigned uh, for years and years and years under uh, that banner. Um, if I wanted, you know, there's, every year there's a World Day of Prayer, um, International Day of Prayer. Uh, there are flags, and many churches fly those flags uh, in front of churches, and it's the prerogative. They're Christian churches. Uh, I understand that in some uh, municipalities down in the states, they also fly them on the municipal flagpole. So that discussion comes to council. Um, this is a, a flag raised for a particular uh, subset religion inside of all religions. It's Christianity. It's not, uh, you know, the. Um, I, I, you know, so so how do how do we vote on that? Do we do we allow uh, the World Day of Prayer flag to fly up on a municipal flagpole? Is that appropriate? Well, in, in categories, it's exact same discussion in categories, right? It's a protected right under the charter, um, and so you know we we have I guess the, you know, the freedom of religion, but you know the courts have also argued we have the freedom from religion. You know, you can be an atheist and and you can take offense to any religious flag and it doesn't matter if it's um um you know uh muslim flag or so that that's you know we, we talk about race as a protected right religion's a protected right as a sexual orientation so let's treat let's just be fair let's be consistent let's be logical and have yeah. a fulsome discussion if, if we want to be logical though let, let's be honest uh dave christians haven't uh faced uh you know people shooting them down for for centuries uh they, they you know in the well, states you, you were bringing southern states uh you know there were people lynching black people for crying out loud not not that long ago for crying like it's ridiculous so uh, to uh, th- that's why it's different like that that's why it's different uh, at well, this point in time well, we're trying to build an inclusive sort of idea where people who have been told that they're not allowed to be kind of a part of this grander conversation um uh, getting that message out that no you are you are a part of all of this no but let's let's back up first of all you know you, you made an assumption that christians have enjoyed a, a freedom and and to a certain extent in the north american context they have although we can see that um i, I guess when you're um uh, vocal there's no shortage of people who have a different opinion and they they like to uh, opposition at the end of the day let's have a dialogue so first and foremost let's not shut down let's not scream at each other right we, what's happened the violence the even the events that happened at, at gage park and hamilton and all still those images are fresh in our minds all the time you know that violence is the yelling at each other let's have a discussion then let's also acknowledge that not every place in the world enjoys uh, all the freedoms that we have hot, fought hard for in, in Canadian uh, society. So, you know, sexual orientation is a protected right. At, in Canada, I believe, it doesn't have the uh, racial tension that they do in, the, in, in America. We, we enjoy better. Is, it, is there racism? Nobody's denying that. Is it better? Is there improvement? Is there, is there a, 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 a spectrum on which we've made great strides. Yes, absolutely nobody's denying that. Same with religion. But in other parts of the world, um, Christians are being persecuted. That's a fact as well. And so when when Canada speaks and engages in um, discussions worldwide for um, you know rights in China, for example, they, they talk about the rights of women, the rights of the children, the rights, you know, they, they press for... Um, uh, freedom of uh, sexual orientation and freedom of religion. They're pressing for all the rights that we've hard, fought hard for in Canada, ones that we've entrenched in our Constitution. So, you know, it, it's it's part of a dialogue, and if we have differences, you know, we, we treat each other with respect, and let's look for consistency. Perspective, consistency, but consistency logic. doesn't... Consistency doesn't fix the, the things that we the, the problems that we've had in our society for years, Dave. Like that, well, that's, that's part of this because and, and I heard a really great uh, explanation of this the other day when somebody was talking about 
the idea between uh, Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter and why, of course, All Lives Matter, but right now we are focused on Black Lives Matter. Why? Because they are disproportionately being um, attacked by other people. And this is the, I think this goes exactly the same for uh, those that would fly under the, the pride flag. Um, is, is in this pandemic state, we are making a lot of changes to combat COVID-19, right? We are, we are doing a heck of a lot right now uh, sure. to, to make sure that this spreads. This doesn't mean that we all of a sudden pretend that heart disease doesn't exist or cancer doesn't exist and all of these other diseases don't exist we just understand that in this moment we have to focus on this so that later on we can take care of the rest of it as well okay so again um you you spoke of consistency in in the race relations one of the things that's sparking that is the inconsistency of the application and 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 you're, you're basically talking about uh about that so what what right what right do um, those who practice uh, various sexual orientations, what right don't they have under Canadian legislation? What, what do they have to fight for? What do they, what, you know, they have, they have adoptive rights. They have rights to marry. They have rights to, to uh, freedom, uh, to receive benefits from each other, they, uh, you know, through, through health care plans. And they have, they have every right as a Canadian. They, and they've, they fought, and, and, you know, for 30 years I've, you know, I've seen that that um, that progression, and and so tell me, this isn't. I but guess they, we uh, have I to have consistency. This is. I think this is where we're, we're disconnecting. This isn't about a right on paper because the rights on paper are there. It, it, it's the it, it's the inherent um, looking at. It's the inherent kind of belief of some people that they are less than when when okay. they see them on the street. The rights are on paper. I'll give you that. Sure, it's on paper, but when it doesn't always translate into the way that people interact with them and people look at them for jobs or people okay. look at them for other opportunities within uh, the community. This isn't just a simple, you know what. What's it say in a, in a constitution somewhere? So, so again, um, you know, thirty years of identity politics, singling out a particular right or a particular uh, grievance from one community against the next. What has that accomplished? After thirty years, we're more violent. We're yelling at each other louder, and we're we're becoming more uh, polarized. So. You know, I, I, I've been kind of following it, and there's a lot of parallels to, you know, the Black, Black Lives Matter, and, and, and to a certain extent, uh, this discussion has always been a, a parallel discussion because it, it, it exposes, you know, uh, deep-seated understandings and such. But um, I, I saw an interview um, with uh, Denzel Washington and Morgan Freeman, who were just saying, stop talking about it. Why do we need a Black History Month? Black history is, is American history. And and the more we talk, we haven't been able to fix anything by 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 polarizing around these issues. And I, and I think to a certain degree, if we look at um, uh, uh, French English distinctions in Canada or or indigenous um, relations with Canada, by by polarizing, we haven't been able to rectify first of all any of the the uh, challenges of the past. Any of the any of the grievances of the past, you know, like uh, it, it seems like all, all we do is make them real. Like so now, for example, there were grievances in the past. Nobody's denying that. But today in Minneapolis, there are there are more grievances. They, they've been set on fire and and there's people who are very upset um, and they're upset for kind of a, a indiscriminate. They're, they're, they're upset at society. I, you know, there, there, there's no shortage of of. Um, of uh, people being violated by by the the very you know they they were black store owners who were being vandalized and victimized by Black Lives Matter um, you know banner wave you know there's no shortage of of that inconsistency why, why did that happen now there's a new grievance and so who do they pick that blame on well I blame I blame identity politics uh, you know uh, there there's 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 a spark there, and nobody's denying that what happened to uh, uh, George Floyd was was uh, right. But you know, um, so there's a grievance. But is it a collective grievance? Grievance, or is it a one? Is it does it? Um, you know, it, there was a man who was there was a police officer who was charged. So let it run its course. You know, and and if he gets justice, George Floyd. I mean, if he gets justice. 
that's no different than anybody else that's you know like if if my my child was murdered i'd want justice too and i want that perpetrator does that mean that everything that that person stands for as a collective in society was against my daughter or my family of course not it's it's you know it's, at the end of the, have, at but, the end but, of the day you have to think of all the things that had to happen for the pressure for the charges to be laid, for the charges, and if we're going to talk about George Floyd specifically, for charges to be laid, for charges then to be actually, you know, increased. That came after days and days of giant protests well, no, and, no, and people speaking up saying that's not right. When you think about it, if it was, you know, one of our kids that were killed and we were sitting there watching that as a, as a white individual, guess what? We wouldn't have had to wait that long. That they wouldn't well, have had to wait that long for that decision to come down, but now, that these now, people have been through this for so long. Like, I, I, and the I, messaging I understand. Gets, uh. I, I, I know. I, I know. It, it seemed like public pressure. Let, let me speak from the other side. There's a lot of um, events, even in my short career as a mayor, where the community is thinking that we need to act really, really fast. Due diligence, due process are still also very cherished rights in in, uh, in our society. So when that death happens, you know that immediately there's an investigation. And an investigation has to take place. So the, like, like anything else happens in Canada, the person at the, at the heart of it or the several people are put on the suspens- suspension. And there's an investigation because fundamental to the rights also as Canadians is that you have you know, um, uh, due process that you are, are innocent until proven guilty. Um, so there, there's a, a, an investigation. It wasn't that long before those the, the, the charges were laid against the first officer than the other four. So an investigation, um, you know, I, I received, <clears throat> hey, we, let, I was in the NPCA. Um, you know, there were protests. Um, you know, people think thought that we weren't acting quick enough in the very beginning to clean house. You know, um, looking back on it now, one year later, um, it's it's a small amount of time, but we had to identify, we had to do an investigation. We we conducted thorough investigations by third parties, and you know, it's very easy to uh, make a judgment on the street, and we know this is very often the case. We make a judgment on the street based on the facts that we receive, and then an investigation takes place, and sometimes we're, we're you know outraged that something didn't take place that we had thought should take place, but other times, you know, justice is, is served. And so, you know, again, I understand the speed and the vita- volatility of the situation, um, but, you know... Uh, the officer that uh, committed this crime, you know, was was charged, um, but he has, you know, like all criminals, uh, have the rights, and some of the fundamental are innocent until proven guilty. And, and in a very hot, immediate media culture, um, sometimes they don't get a fair shake in the in the media based on information. And, um, and I can point to all kinds of in, in, injustices at the media level, but that were not prosecuted all the way prosecuted all the way through we had our own case with um the officer in um in toronto that uh, shot the uh, young man on the on the bus you know there was an investigation and he was charged um uh, and at that first blush it was it was it was kind of a done deal same same with the young man that was uh, shot trying to protect uh, an older man and and you know the media had passed judgment against that uh that uh in that violence but he was you know through the justice system it was determined that he was not culpable so um there's still going to be a court case uh for for those cops involved in that and 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 again no kind of back to the the original thing uh, the the original discussion (laughs) discussion there are always going to be injustices correct but in terms of rights, what are they? What what are anyone who's flying a flag, whether that's Black Lives Matter in America or, or the Pride flag? What are they still fighting for? Is it necessary, or have they won? Have they achieved everything? And it's just a question of, you know, um, uh, like of time. There are people who. who okay, can, I, can I just, Dave? Uh, you, yeah. You, um, you realize that 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 the 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 push to to end racism and the and, and to uh, push uh, to to end kind of the discrimination towards those who fly under the pride flag. Um, you realize that isn't done, right? 
Absolutely. That's not, that's and you know what? I'm, I, I'm no, I'm no uh, uh, like utopian or anything like that. That will, that will always be, um, you know, part of it because, you know, um, what upbringing, culture, those things. I understand. Like I, I, I'm just pointing to the simple reality that when when you've achieved those rights, then then the I'm, I'm saying identity politics is not working. We have 30 years of identity politics, which has shown that this is not the solution. So um, I am, I have a working relationship with and, and a high regard and respect for all people that I've worked with. You ask, you go to the, Why the, the identity council, politics, and the chamber, right? I don't, I don't, I don't question that because my upbringing was that you uh, love your neighbor as yourself and you treat all people equally. That was my upbringing. But, is that everybody's upbringing? No. So it'll always, in sense, in a sense, exist. And whether it's orientation or against religion or whether that's against age, I mean, there, there's a huge growing trend to mistreat elderly people. They've always had a beautiful status, almost kind of a cherished status in our society, but there's some atrocious um, uh, grievances against uh, people uh, of, of our senior age. Um, whether that's done by uh, children through through uh, abuse or whether that's uh, um, in long-term care homes. So you're right. You're absolutely right. And, and I agree 100%. This will never be done. Um, I'm just well, saying I'm not even that, saying it's never be done. Like, we're, we're, we're not done. Like, we haven't, we haven't made yeah. the substantial changes that well, need I to be happening. Well, I guess I'm a little bit more of a pessimist, pessimist that way and, and saying that, um, you know, if, if you look at history – um, goes around, comes around. So vigilance is part of it, you know, and 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 diligence. And I, I'm, hey, like, I mean, it's 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 a it's a fair opinion, I guess. In the Black Lives Matter, I'd be the one holding the sign that said "All Lives Matter," trying to and tear you're down. You're missing the point. Well, you're missing the point. I, I mean, uh, uh, you're missing the point. I, yeah, yeah, sure. You know what? Like, let's have a discussion about that. Well, you and I are having a discussion. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's it's legitimate for me to to point out that that everyone in Canadian society has has fair fair standing under the law. They've 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 got yeah. all the rights of their neighbor, right? They, and we, that's like, fair. We, and we I, I think you understand that, right? that we we have that 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 right is there for everybody, but that right is not held up all the time. And that's the problem: is it's on paper, but it's not held up. It's just like the treaty rights for Indigenous people. Their rights right. on paper, but when they get upset. Uh, at something that the government's doing, people go, well, there's no tough luck. Who cares? It's in their treaty right. And we we are too many times ignoring what is on that paper that is is that inherent right. Okay, so so you brought it up again, just um, uh, the indigenous. So how do we, what's, what's some of the challenges that we face? Um, you know, I, recently I drove past... Um, um, the, the reservation around uh, in Brant, um, up Indian line, and every entrance to the reservation, there are two armed guards. Uh, they've got their guns out. They're uh, indigenous people, and they're protecting the reservation from any outsiders. They, you know, and I think to myself, that's that's fire. That's that's what what um, securing and and acknowledging. Um, indigenous rights has produced uh, this 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 military style um, opposition when they feel that they've been wronged. Uh, they take up arms. Nobody else in Canada is saying, or uh, op- you know, the pride community, those who've been uh, you know grieved uh, in many ways, they're not taking up arms like that. I'm saying identity politics has had its run. It's had a fair trial in 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 our in our societies. It's done good, but it's not it's not the final analysis either. And we can see all the tensions and we can draw a thousand lines through our society. And none of that's helpful unless we start uniting under the Canadian flag. And that's 
my, my point. They don't have to unite under the – and I'm way over time here. But Indigenous <laughs> people don't have to go under the Canadian flag because they, they were here first. We signed a treaty with them that in, that ensured uh, their individuality and their land. So they, they don't need to uh, go under a, a Canadian flag banner, and they're, they're, they're never going to. Uh, but they, I wish we had more time because I, th- I think we've got all kinds of – Hey, no, I appreciate um, the discussion, and I appreciate the opportunity you, uh, you give us to uh, – to uh, put put forward, uh, you know, opinions out in, out out in the public square. So good, they, thank we'll, you. We'll we'll talk again. Thanks.